trying to go back out and, and wake people up and say, Christ is real. He rose from the dead. He wants to save us. But we're, we're falling asleep back in our sins. We're going back to bed. We're pressing this news button. And we're not raising up, rising up to the challenges that are faced before us. Right, it's a great mystery that St. Paul talks about, you know, mm -hmm. that it's it's through loving my spouse that I'm actualizing my love, you know, for the Lord, because God obviously is invisible. And so here's a concrete manifestation of his love, a great gift that he's given to me, that if I pursue and view my relationship through that lens, that this is a gift that God has given, and so I'm in charge to be responsible to this, um, then I'm loving God by loving my spouse. Uh, and loving my spouse... I'm, I'm loving the Lord through all that. Two things. One is that, that passage in, um, I can't remember if it was James, but it, you know, someone who says they love God, but they hate their neighbor or whatever, mm -hmm. is a liar and their religion's in vain. Like it's, it, it, and also too, like you know, when, when Jesus was, was asked about the greatest commandment, you know, he says, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and all your soul. And then he immediately goes into the second greatest commandment, which is right. to love your neighbor as yourself. So if... You know, it's it goes together. Like that's why I was trying to say, like my my Christian life and my married life are not two separate lives, but it's it's one. Right. So therefore, and at the same time, there is a priority. Like in Matthew's gospel, yeah. um, in Luke's gospel, he, uh, Jesus is really uh, harsh with his words. He says, "If you must hate, you know, wife, right. children, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, um, if you wish to be my disciple." Mm -hmm. So you know, this hyperbole. This usage of this word is helping us understand that, like, if I'm not putting God first, then I won't be able to love those rightly in my life. Like, because that's where love comes from. God is love. And so if, if I'm abiding that relationship, and I think that's, I love going back to Genesis, where Adam and Eve, they put their relationship ahead of God. And they, by, by choosing to eat, choosing to eat from the fruit of the tree that they were told not to, they broke faith with God, and then they their relationship was negatively impacted. Right, that they saw each other differently. The understatement of the world. I know, right? <laughs> like they, they their they, relationship was negatively impacted. Like exactly, like it's we I mean, all die. Right, exactly. I mean this. I mean right. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean not to put too much drama into it, but truly, it was it 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 from that day forth, hardness of heart due to sin. But in the beginning, it was not so because in the beginning, before they did that, they were able to, sure. they were in con communion with God, which gave them the ability to see one another and love one another rightly. And as soon as they broke from God, they pulled the power and they lost the ability to see one another rightly and to love one another rightly. And, and it's because of that, that then you can see all throughout the Old Testament, this, this falling short of man's ability to follow God's commandment, to stay married to one another, to love rightly. But then Christ comes to reconnect us, to send the Holy Spirit. He says, that I, I must go because the advocate must come. That power, which is going to give us the strength to be able to love one another rightly because we are back in union with the Father. And so we have to see that our priority first absolutely is with God. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's from that relationship that then I can love those rightly. But then I can't say that I love God and then neglect my family. Mm -hmm. that, that God's not giving us permission to do that to abandon my spouse, to abandon my children because I'm, I'm too busy, caught up in, in church activities. Correct, yeah. Like I've got to have priority in my, obviously in deepening my relationship with God and then going out and loving my wife and loving my children, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to go to the Old Testament to, to see struggles against sin and right. faithfulness to God. I mean, that's still happening today. But that's It's just that we have grace, right. different grace that, that helps us to overcome those struggles. You know, uh, I, I said this before, but in in, uh, in Pope Pius the the eleventh, the Constant Canubi, nineteen thirty, right. he says um, he's talking about this perverse morality. Mm -hmm. So nineteen thirty, perverse morality that's going on out there, and he says we have forgotten that salvific work. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten what Christ has done, and so we have abandoned the the, the source of all love, mm -hmm. the one who is love, mm -hmm. and we we're trying to make it our way apart from Him. And, and we're running into problems. And he saw that in 1930. 
and then it just completely escalated from that point on. And that's where we are right now, where we're trying to find this new, this re-evangelization, this new evangelization, where we're trying to go back out and, and wake people up and say, Christ is real. He rose from the dead. He wants to save us, but we're, we're falling asleep back in our sins. We're going back to bed. We're pressing the snooze button, and we're not raising up, rising up to the challenges that are faced before us. And so when we find it hard, we're like, man, this is, this isn't what I signed up for. And then, so then they abandon their post, they go find something easier, but they run into the same problem because they're forgetting where their strength comes from.